Hi, Robin Belmont here. Just to aggression four. This is a practical supplement to chapter three of Michael Campbell's excellent little book, Statistics at Square Two. And we're looking at how to carry out the analysis described in SPSS R command and R. We're looking at logistic aggression where we have one or more input variables, independent variables, and one outcome variable is always a binary variable in this instance. So the example Michael Campbell gives is of people who have survived or died from diabetes of two types. They're either non-insulin dependent diabetics or insulin dependent diabetics. And he also divided them up into those that are less than 40 and those that are 40 and older. So we have one input variable, this is age, another one which is diabetes type, um, non-insulin dependent and insulin dependent diabetes and then we have one outcome binary variable which is whether they were alive or dead at the end. So non-insulin independent diabetes and insulin dependent diabetes could be classed as a nominal variable with two categories but age, um, we've dichotomized it but um, it really isn't nominal, is it? It's actually ordinal, but we'll class it as nominal for this analysis. How do we enter this data into SPSS? Well, this is how we do it. We have four columns. The first column is the age variable. The second column is the diabetes variable. Next column, third one, is status, whether alive or dead. And the last column is the number for that cell. So if you notice, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cells there. So we've got eight rows of data there. And obviously we have to use value labels. So we have zero equals less than 40 years and one equals more than 40 years. So for diabetics, we've chosen zero equals non-insulin de dependent and one equals insulin dependent diabetes. And for status, we have zero equals alive, one equals dead. The important thing is always to remember is which value you made one because when we get the estimates back they are based upon the actual category which equals one. So we have to make sure we remember that. We can actually amalgamate those two tables together just have one independent variable the diabetes one with two levels and ignore age. So that's what I've done there. And then we can just carry out an ordinary odds ratio on that data. So we can consider the odds ratio of death for the insulin dependent versus the non-insulin dependent. And if you do that, you get 0.62. So that means that the odds of insulin dependent diabetics dying is slightly over that of non-insulin dependent diabetics. That is, of course, for ignoring age and the whole point of this analysis, if you read um, Michael Campbell's chapter, is because we come across a thing called Simpson's Paradox. It's where we've got there that actually um, it sounds like it's um, better to have insulin dependent diabetes than non -insulin, non insulin dependent. Um, actually, when you look at them for different age ranges, so it's under 40s and over 40s, you find that actually that value is reversed, something like 1.2 or something. And this situation is called Simpson's Paradox. We have another intervening variable which affects the other variable. It acts as a confounder. So we'll carry out the analysis now first in SPSS and then R. Here we are in the data. First of all, we check that we've got the weighting variable on. So we go to data, weight cases. And yes, we have the frequency variable is count, which is correct, so we can just cancel that. So to actually do carry out the analysis, we go analyze, regression, binary logistic. Analyze, regression, binary logistic. We just look here and we notice we've got you know, dependent variable status, which is whether live or dead, the values. And then we have in here covariate, which is diabetes. So diabetes status. Remember we want to have age as well. If you look at Campbell's example, he actually has the analysis done first with one covariate and then with two. So what he's done is added a second 
stage here so we click on next and then we add in age the second time so that's block two it says there block two we've added in age block one we've got diabetes and we can go to options we can ask for the confidence interval so you continue and press ok now if we look down here at the results there's our first step and notice we've got diabetes estimate there and there's the logs ratio 0.621 which is exactly the same as Campbell with a confidence interval and if we carry on down we'll find the analysis with both variables in it and there we are again identical to Campbell's output Hi, here we are in R, and we're going to actually just create the data in R directly using the actual summary values in the cells. So first of all, we have our data vector, which are the numbers of those that died in each of our categories. And look at those that were alive in each of the categories. And we're going to just combine those two together to form a matrix. There we are. So we say status which is a dependent variable, is equal to those two vectors. So now we have the dependent variable, we need to code the dummy independent variables. So the first one we had was age. So here we are, so I've coded the first one as age, and I've coded just as we did in SPSS, zero is for those at less than 40 years, and one is for those at 40 years or over. So the first two values there, and each of our vectors are for the under 40s and then the second two are for the over 40s just as in SPSSS and now we do the same for our other independent variable the diabetes one so we have two diabetes types remember none insulin dependent which I've coded as 0 and insulin dependent which I've coded as 1 so again exactly the same 0 1 0 1 now we just create our model um, we could do exactly the same as Daniel did and run it first with one independent variable and then with two independent variables and I'm just going to run it straight away with two independent variables leave that as an exercise to do the first one if you wish so here we are the model it's pretty much the same as the last example we looked at except we've got here a plus sign which is for age so we have general linear model and the form that equals status the dependent variable tilde which divides up the dependent and independent variables diabetes type plus age and we use the binomial distribution to help predict new values and if you type in the model we get a result you'll see these values and um, although they look different from those in Campbell it's because they are the logs odds ratios so if you remember you can very easily convert the log odds ratios to the odds ratios by using the exp function so here we are exp the coefficients of our model press return and these values are identical now to Campbell's so we have here the diabetes which is 1.199 the odds ratio which is identical. and here we've got um, this plus two which means you move the decimal place two to the right so if you move it once, that's 11.8, then again 118.8813, which is identical to Campbell's. And we can get the confidence intervals exactly the same as we did before in the two previous examples. We exponentiate, or if you want to call it anti-log, which is easier to say, the confidence intervals for our model. Let's return, and there they are, the confidence intervals for our model. We obviously could add in our parameter there, telling us what confidence interval we wanted, 90%, 85% what have you. It defaults to 95%. So diabetes, it's 0 0.87 because we move it 1 to the left, because it's minus 1. And this one we move 1 to the right, so it's 26. So we've carried out our analysis using both SPSSS and there's the... A table we set up with the codings for the variables and we also code out in R and then we've got a set of results probably most important being a table of estimates of the variables in the equation with diabetes 
variable and the age variable as two independent variables. And you'll notice actually in the diabetes row that it was insignificant, it was 0.255, the associated p-value, which means we probably wouldn't have actually used it in the equation. Um, assuming that it was significant, that is, it was lower than our critical value, which we usually said at 0.05, um, so it was something like 0 0.002 or, or what have you, then we could have said that the odds of an insulin dependent diabetic dying is increased by 20% compared to that of a non-insulin diabetic taking age into account. We get that 20% from the point zero one nine nine. Um, because our diabetes variable is a nominal variable, and it has two categories, and because of the way we coded it, we can actually take its reciprocal value, that is 1 divided by 1.199, which gives us 0 0.8340, and that actually becomes our odds for the non-insulin dependent diabetic. So if we had had a significant result, we could have said also that the odds of a non-insulin dependent diabetic dying is 83% that of an insulin diabetic taking age into account. Obviously I should put insulin dependent diabetic there, but sorry about that. Right, so we move on now to our next example in the next YouTube clip.